At Pelican Hill, we have a wide variety of design features and, and of and many different things we were able to incorporate in the design. Uh, included with that would be the different uh, colors, the different textures of grasses, uh, the different types of vegetation that we have. And in many cases, the vegetation was selected uh, as well because of its variety and its uh, individual character. Here at Pelican Hill, we have the blend of, of, of all those issues. And again, whether it's the ocean, whether it's the elevation change, whether it's the vegetation, whether it's the texture of the grass, the, the, the contours and elevations and the slopes and the features in each individual golf hole, whether it's the, uh, the native sand bunkers or the formal sand bunkers, uh, we have all these different things uh, as incorporated in the design that makes it for a very distinctive and unique golf course. It's interesting to listen to golfers uh, have uh, opinions about their uh, uh, places they've been and the places they play and uh, it's very nice to sit around and or run into people. You run into people in an airport or some other place, another loca another state, and people will say, well, I was at Pelican Hill last week and I played it and I just thought it was sensational. And, and they go on and on. And I really have a hard time even asking them a question because they don't give me a chance to talk. They, they keep talking about it, keep talking about the view and the setting and the environments. Everyone I've, I've talked to have been to Pelican Hill and they just can't wait to get back there and play again. If I were giving some tips to golfers coming to Pelican Hill, the first thing I would tell them, make sure the beauty of the environment doesn't distract you from playing the game that you came to play. Also, because golf is such a difficult mind game, you do have to uh, look at this golf course in such a way that it's not as difficult as it looks. Then I'd also say that uh, if you think your way around, there's a lot of places that you can play to uh, that actually play away from where a hazard feature may be, whether it's a ravine, a bunker, or an elevation uh, contour. So it really is a thinking person's golf course, and there's so many different options and ways to play the golf course. And if you let the, uh, uh, the hillsides and some of the slopes and ravines help you uh, by using those slopes and hillsides to bounce the ball t towards the green areas to the center of the fairway, there's a lot of uh, areas and slopes that uh, actually will be your friend. Eleventh hole was one of those holes that was always on the plan and never changed. It was such a natural feature and setting. We start up high uh, from elevation and we're playing down low to the ocean. It's pretty much of a straight golf hole and that was done purposely because we wanted to capture the view of the ocean directly from the tee. And so when you're standing on a tee, it's an automatic wow factor of, wow, this hole is maybe the best hole I've ever seen. And the interesting thing about Pelican Hill, you probably said that about the 10th hole when you just came from 10, then after you go leave 11, you go to 12 and say, no, this is the best hole I've ever seen. And you go to 13 and you know, no, that's the best hole. So that's the whole process that evolves here on Pelican Hill. And certainly that gets into this being one of our signature holes, but it just so happens to be that we have so many of them, this fits in to be one of those unique special golf holes. Well, the bunker uh, details here at Pelican Hill are uh, certainly, uh, I would call them uh, uh, significant uh, individual and special features of the golf courses. I also refer to bunkers as a little bit of the frame on the picture. So when you stand on the tee and you look at the golf hole, you look at the fairway, the shapes and the forms and the, and the elevations of the bunkers are a very important part of the golf hole. When uh, choosing sand for bunkers, there are several uh, details we look for. Uh, one of those uh, probably is the most important and premier, uh, uh, the playability and how the ball reacts to the sand as it comes down, especially when you're playing against the wind so the ball doesn't bury and get uh, uh, the fried egg, classic fried egg lie. Now, obviously, uh, sand bunkers are, are hazards. You know, you're not allowed to ground your club, so we're not trying to make it easy, but we're also not trying to make it overly difficult, and we're trying to make it fair. Uh, the next criteria that we look for is certainly the color and, and how the color and then the blending of that sand uh, presents the, the visual and sets up the golf hole. So 
here at Pelican Hill, we have the finest grade sand uh, uh, that incorporates both of those uh, uh, design and uh, playability characteristics are most important for us. Here on the south course of Pelican Hill at our 13th hole, we have a very distinct uh, and special type of golf hole. What we were able to do, we actually built two greens on this golf hole, and based on where we put the tee placements is how strong the golf hole could set up and how it would play. The majority of people that play at Pelican Hill, uh, if you ask them about the 13th hole, and they're automatically they're going to say, oh, you mean the hole with the two greens? And then you get what I call the cocktail talk after the round. Well, you know, I played the I played the pin on the left green today, and a couple days ago I played the one on the right, and I think the one on the left's harder than the right. Someone else says, well, I think the one on the right's harder. And you get into that discussion and opinions and conversation about golf that also makes it distinctive. So I, I, of all the golf holes, uh, hundreds and hundreds of golf holes I've had the opportunity to be a part of, uh, I'd say this particular golf hole, 13, and, South Course of Pelican Hill is one of the unique and most distinctive golf holes that you can play. The differences between the, the two courses, the north and the south, are very different in the sense that we were able to wind and, and route the south course through some of the lower contours of the land and then also bring it down closer to the ocean and actually bring it right to the ocean edge and parallel along the edge of the ocean then we wind back up to the hill where on the north course we have all ocean view we have tremendous spectacular ocean settings ocean views but they happen to be all on top of the hill and a few holes down in some valleys so we have a whole different feeling where the golf course on the north is literally more open and it's wider and more uh, uh, wider vistas where on the south course we've been able to, to funnel the views and target the views through some narrow corridors of vegetation that's been planted and bring the golf holes down to the ocean so it has a totally different kind of a setting. Here on the south golf course at uh, our 13th hole where we have two individual separate greens, this hole happens to have two greens because we wanted to take advantage of the ocean and it gave us the opportunity to have some variety and uniqueness. At our 12th hole, which happens to be a par three as well, we have two par threes in a row. On paper, that could look like uh, a challenge. Why would you have two par threes in a row? Well, we wanted to get maximum exposure to the ocean, so we put two golf holes on the ocean rather than one. And this ocean environment uh, just is, is our special feature that no matter where you turn, and even uh, when you're standing on the tee, the next hole, uh, hole number 15 that plays away from the ocean back up to the, uh, uh, towards the clubhouse area, most of the people are standing on the tee and they're hoping that somebody's in the fairway, so they have to pause and wait a little bit so they can stand and just look at the environment and the setting. It's not often that uh, a designer has a chance to go back and relook at something that uh, they've been involved in the creation from the beginning, especially in a in a great weather climate like Southern California, because uh, there's literally no downtime generally. So the golf course is always out there, ready for play. Uh, but having this opportunity to come back and tweak, and update, and uh, renovate, and add, and prune and trim and do all the detailed things that we've been able to accomplish here at Pelican Hill this season, uh, it really is special. It's hard to imagine you can have something that's considered and ranked so highly in the, in the world of golf, and here we are and have an opportunity to make it better. The beauty and, and the visuals throughout the entire property are sensational. And over a period of time, uh, because of the uh, amount of vegetation that was planted and all the natural uh, plants that grow, uh, we always have to go back and make those uh, uh, little, we call them haircuts sometimes, we call them replanting, uh, and sometimes even uh, eliminate some vegetation because it, it grows so much. 
I hope this place is never finished so I can always come back. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be a part of it, to work at it, to come here. Sometimes you have to use the excuse to come in here to play it just to, so I can uh, uh, make some recommendations so we can come back more often because this is one of the great places of the world. So uh, I'm not sure that this, the Pelican Hill will ever be finished in my mind at least.